This morning, the country is at crossroads. With less than a week to the scheduled repeat presidential poll, a cloud of doubt has been cast on the practicability of the election taking place. IEBC Chair Wafula Chebukati confirming these doubts. But time is running out. When the Supreme Court annulled the win of the President uh, Uhuru Kenyatta on the 8th of August, a window of 60 days was issued in which IEBC was to conduct another election in strict adherence to the Constitution. But the Commission would find itself between a rock and a hard place, with NASA leaders pushing for reforms as Jubilee hurriedly changing poll laws. Among other demands, NASA wants IEBC CEO Ezra Chiloba and 11 other poll staff to vacate office. And to date, the opposition says its irreducible minimums have not been addressed. For Jubilee, they are set for the fresh elections, accusing the opposition of pushing for a power-sharing deal. The grandstanding uh, persists. And just hours ago, NASA declared a countrywide protest on the poll day. Today, presiding um, or presiding over the campaign tri trail and to culminate in the national prayers on Sunday, while NASA is taking its no election message to the people. Where do we go from here? The clock is ticking and the country needs direction. This is the state of the nation. And to help us dissect and look at these issues, I have Homer Bay Senator Moses Kajuang, um, 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 James Mamboleo, a lawyer and an advocate, and Eugene Adambo, who is a deputy chair uh, of Third Way Alliance Kenya. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us this morning. And this is the state of the nation. Definitely uncharted grounds that we're in. We've never been here before. And the Constitution basically is meant to be our guide. But every day that unfolds, it seems that we have a new twist to this story. And I'll request right at this point that we don't look at this as a jubilee, NASA, Third Way Alliance, and any other party affair. This is Kenya we are talking about. And I think sometimes we divide this country by literally looking at things through the prism of a political party, although they do represent a people. But can we objectively look at this narrative from the basis of this being Kenya? This is Kenya we are talking about. You and I, before we become political parties or whatever we are aligned to, we are Kenyans. Let me start with you, uh, Mamboleo, on where we are today and what you see as a country. We are in uh, a situation in which uh, the country doesn't know exactly how to go forward. And we are almost going into a situation in which we might fall out of constitutional regulation. Um, if, for instance, we do not conduct the election on 26th of, uh, of, of this month, then we are probably in... Uh, on the path to sliding into a scenario in which the Constitution no longer tells us what to do. I believe very strongly that uh, the two protagonists on uh, this side need to understand this extremely uh, clearly. The Supreme Court ordered us to conduct an election um, within, 60 month, within 60 days. I'm sure this court understood that uh, organizing such kind of election would be extremely difficult under these circumstances. We have seen uh, what has been happening at the IABC. And uh, it's also important to note that you know, this IABC commission was actually overhauled this year. So um, we, 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 we are in that situation in which uh, leadership now needs to come from both sides. I think NASA needs to uh, pull off its, its troops off the streets, and uh, the president and his side also need to um, get to a point where they probably need to s s reach out to the opposition and see what best can be, uh, can be done within these circumstances to make sure this country moves forward. All right. Um, Senator Moses Kajuan. Uh, thank you, Mike, and uh, good morning to our viewers. We are where we've not been as a country. Uh, fortunately, we are where other countries have been. And uh, there are, uh, there's no shortage of examples of other countries that have mismanaged their elections, that have mismanaged their politics, and uh, the end result has been civil strife. The end result has been uh, disintegration of countries and nations. We, we've seen Ivory Coast. We saw Uganda when uh, Yoweri Museveni went to the bush. It was complaining about electoral rigging by Obote, uh, the Obote II regime. We've seen many other examples. You know, you can count them uh, and, and, and exhaust you, you, your, your fingers. We have a constitution that is not very old. And I keep saying that a constitution sometimes is like a large house, which has some rooms that you rarely enter. 
and unless visitors come or unless something you know spectacular happens mm. and and we found ourselves in this situation where we are testing the sections to do with elections the sections to do with the power and uh, how you transit from one government to the other and there's no perfect constitution mike i like the what you have said and and and, and that really should be the footnote for discussions going forward mm. that at the end of the day this country is not for jubilee or nasa this country belongs to all of us. I kept reflecting on the current situation just the other day and compared it with the struggles we had uh, pre-independence uh, when we were fighting against uh, colonialism and white domination. We could afford to be vicious. We could afford to take very hardline positions because if we kicked out the colonialists, they had Britain and England to go back to. Correct. They had somewhere to go back to. But in today's Kenya, if Jubilee is going to take a hardline position against NASA, and NASA takes a hardline position against Jubilee, where will these people go to if they feel they're excluded from power? We have had comments coming from very high levels in this country telling others that you are not even going to get a slice of bread. Leave alone uh, a, cr a crust or a crumb. You're not. Kenya is crying out for a government or politics that will make everyone feel at home. The positions we take, the hardline positions we take, are not going to help us unless we want to consign some people to be refugees or to in be unwanted country. in their own country. Absolutely. The conversation from now going forward should be on how do we move and build a country, hold this country together. The president yesterday talked about prayers. Unfortunately, speaks from both sides of the mouth because he talks about prayers in the morning and in the evening when he goes onto the campaign trail, he's talking about something different. Raila Odinga withdrew from the race, but that does not mean that he has stopped being a Kenyan. That does not mean that he, he has uh, given up his right to comment and to have an opinion on issues going on in Kenya. Right now, the two people who hold the key to stability of this country is Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta. All right, it we'll is not the, the IBC because the solution is not an election. And this, I will keep repeating, that the solution to our problems is not an election. The solution to our problems is not the Supreme Court. The solution to our problems is not legalism. Mm. We just need political goodwill. It's a political solution that <clears throat> we require. Eugene, your, your opening remarks on where we are as a country. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at uh, the turn of events uh, after 8th of August, you realize that uh, Kenya is in a situation because of, uh, rightfully, as uh, Senator says, uh, between uh, Uhuru and Raila. And that is the, the unfortunate thing that uh, we have as a country. Whereby, if, we, if you are not uh, Jubilee, you are NASA. Now, you can imagine this constitu constituency of Kenyans who don't fall on either. Now, as we talk of uh, uh, trying not to, to lock the six million uh, NASA voters out, there's no consideration for this other constituency that Kenya is. There's a good number of people who n know that uh, the two so-called horses are not the solution for Kenya. I mean, it's been rhetorical from, I don't know, 1960 what, even pre-independence. You rightfully say that uh, the solution is not, may not be on um, the legalities. However, we are a country that respects rule of law. <clears throat> right that is now, supposed to respect rule th of that law. That is supposed to respect rule of law. Uh, Raila has been given his freedom, uh, his democratic freedom to participate in an election or not. He's, he's decided not to. So why then uh, should we peg this election onto Raila's presence or uh, lack of, you know. If he chooses not to go for the elections, it's fine. But you see, he's not choosing not to go for elections because he doesn't want to. Mm -hmm. He's choosing not to go for elections because he says there's some glaring issues that need to be sorted out for there to be a level playing field. In other words, it's a democratic reason if you look at it from that perspective. Very well, very well. But is he the mandated authority to declare that? And as, to, to, as, just show, to, show, to show you the irony behind it, huh? we uh, went into the election. Let, 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 let me just, uh, as, as a Kenyan, mm. any Kenyan, not mm. just Raila Odinga, yes. but any Kenyan has a mandate to declare that if it's not going to be free and fair, they can actually boycott it. Not, one way not or the to other. declare, to observe. The Supreme Court has its, oh, its announcement again that the individuals who have that, there's an official body to announce that. 
right now, if we go to the elections on 26th, yeah, uh, if there's anything that is not conforming to the laid down uh, rules, I mean, the Supreme Court is still there. It is the same, same court that nullified the election. So, so why are we preempting? Why so are not? you suggesting that we go for elections despite the fact that there may be questions that uh... I'm not. I'm not saying that we go for elections. I'm saying that we need to respect rule of law. The Supreme Court was not naive in tasking IBC to deliver an election after 60 days. All right. Okay. Let, 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 me, Mike, let me just Mike, come to Mike. Sorry, Mike. Uh, you know, Third Way Alliance are praising the Supreme Court today. After the Supreme Court made a ruling, they were the first to go and uh, challenge the decision of the Supreme Court. My brother from Third Way Alliance, Raila Odinga is not your competitor because he has withdrawn. Mm -hmm. And it will do you a lot of good and a lot of credibility if you focus on the person you're competing against, who is Uhuru Kenyatta. But don't try to polarize the country any much further. Uh, I think Raila has given his reasons why he thinks that the elections will not be free and fair and why he's not going to participate. Tone down your rhetoric from talking about Raila Odinga every other moment. Tell us, what is Third Way Alliance's plan for agriculture? I don't know. What is your plan for infrastructure? I don't know. What is your plan for health? I don't know. I might just get uh, motivated and decide that I'm going to vote for Third Way Alliance. Yeah, that's Please what just leave uh, Raila Odinga out of it. He has withdrawn. He's not competing against you. You are just reinforcing the perception that there could be a deal between you and Jubilee. I don't want to get into that. All right. Just focus on the tangible and the hard I'll, I'll issues. Give you a chance. That's, that's really directed as, as, I'll, I'll to give me. you a chance. I'll give you a chance okay. to do that. Let me hear from I think, uh, I, I think let's not make this a discussion between uh, uh, NASA and the Third Way Alliance. Yeah. Um, so th this is what is important. And I have listened to uh, Honorable Senator here speak very, very nicely. You see, we have uh, a constitution. That constitution that we have is the social contract um, that we have uh, agreed to govern ourselves as a nation. Now, if we have a discussion about the governance of this country, if we want to uh, deal with issues that probably arise out of a feeling of um, exclusion on the part of some sections of this country, that discussion has to be anchored in the Constitution. Until we change this Constitution uh, so as to have a governance structure which takes into account all these other things other than through an election, other than putting in place a government through a, an election, then we are saying that we do not want to observe the same constitution that we have actually put down for ourselves. Now, this is what I think is important for me. NASA is also being pretentious. What we have here is a political contest. One side of the political contest is saying, I'm not ready to go into this election because I think certain demands I have made have not been met. Now, the institution that is charged with the responsibility of conducting elections is the IEBC. In fact, in developed democracies, neither side makes demands on what that institution is going to do. And I think both sides should stop making any demands on the IEBC. The IEBC has sufficient uh, capacity on itself to know what it needs to do to deliver an election. For instance, if you look at the NASA petition in the Supreme Court, you quickly find that one of the biggest issues there was uh, uh, the, the issue of results transmission. How then come that uh, this particular issue has now mutated into a total failure on the IABC to conduct election. I believe very strongly that NASA is not being genuine. NASA is looking at the scenario it is creating on a daily basis and assessing it so as to play uh, cards which uh, will arise out of the scenario as it is going. I think NASA wants to put this country in a lot of distress. Uh -oh. This is what we need to do. Wait, wait, Senator. This is what we need to do as a country. I believe strongly that we are better off going into an election, putting in place a government, and then asking that government or tasking it with the responsibility of calling everyone, including NASA, to a round table discussion in which we will start ironing out the differences we but have Mabola, as a nation. Do you sincerely believe that if right now the principals are not willing to talk that after an election there'll be uh, room for them to talk? The, the important question is what are they discussing right now? Are they, are they going to discuss about this election or are they going to discuss about the whole range of issues that NASA says this country needs to, needs to, to discuss. And in my view, if it is this election, well, very well, let them discuss and agree. Let's go and do an election uh, in this manner. And then thereafter, we can sit down as a country and discuss on how to take this country forward. Otherwise, otherwise, I'm seeing what NASA wants to do. NASA knows that we have a very small window 
within the 60 days within which you have to conduct an election. Once that goes away, then we have a situation in which the Constitution no longer tells us what we need to do. And in that particular situation, expect that NASA will now make all manner of, of, of demands, including saying, we don't have a government, we need to sit down and have a discussion on how to rule this country because there's no government in power. All right. Um, IABC Chair Wafula Chebukati now wants all election staff adversely accused in the bungling of the August 8th presidential poll to step aside ahead of the repeat polls. Chebukati made the call yesterday while responding to Commissioner Akombe's resignation. NASA has persistently pushed for the resignation of Commission CEO Ezra Chiloba plus 11 others. Let's listen into what has been said so far. I've made several attempts to make critical changes, but all my motions have been defeated by a majority of the commissioners. Under such conditions, it's difficult to guarantee a free, fair, and credible elections. Without critical changes in key secretariat staff, free, fair, and credible elections will surely be compromised. I therefore call on the staff who have been adversely mentioned to step aside to allow this project team to function without interference. All right, let me start with you, Eugene. Those are the words of the chair himself. He says, given the way things are, it is difficult to guarantee free, fair, credible elections. That's just the threshold of the Constitution. Is that way alliance willing to go into the election on the 26th with a chair who admits that if things remain as they are, they cannot guarantee that it's going to be free and fair? Uh, you see, Mike, I, I said that uh, we, are, we are an entity that wants to respect the rule of law. Article 251 of the Constitution is explicit on uh, what it takes to, to, to get uh, an independent body's uh, staff or whoever it is uh, out of the office. So th there's one thing making general remarks in rallies and uh, all these social media platforms. But then we must look at what do we really need to do? If there is gross violation of, uh, say, the constitutional provisions, let us put this as the evidence behind our demand for so and so to leave. Now, right now, we're just saying, you know, NASA has decided that uh, it's this number of commissioners who must go. Uh, you remember initially, Jubilee had a problem with the, the Supreme Court, and we cannot just be talking. Well, Eugene, you're going round the question. What I'm asking is, Third Way Alliance ready to go into the elections on the 26th? We've only got six days to go with a chairman who admits and says that if things remain as they are, and I mean, let's be honest, they're mm -hmm. unlikely to change given the hard stance we have seen from all that are main players. Is Third Way Alliance saying that they are ready to go into the elections with the things as they are? With a chair we, who's evidently coming out in public to say that we are divided commission and we may not be able to guarantee free, fair, credible election. Mike, we respect the rule of law. IBC has the man mandate to conduct the election in Kenya. If they have announced that the election will be on 26th, Third Way Alliance... So regardless of how things are, Third Way Alliance is ready to go for the elections? If the, if the election has been called for 26, Third Way Alliance will be there for the election. All right, let me come to you, uh, Mamboleo. And uh, are you also of the opinion, since you have said that we are guided by the Constitution, and rightly said so, that uh, the IEBC, I stands for independent, okay? And they're supposed to be independent. But now we have the chairman himself, not NASA, not Jubilee, but the chair himself saying that we stand divided within the commission. And secondly, we are going into the elections feeling that we cannot deliver given the things as they are. You know, there's a general presumption that uh, every public officer acts in good faith. And I want to, uh, with a lot of uh, respect, um, hope that uh, the chairman is acting in good faith. For the longest time, the chairman, together with uh, his commissioners, including the commissioner who has just resigned yesterday, have been telling Kenyans that they are actually ready to go for an election. Then one thing happens and leads into another, and all of a sudden, Chebukati comes out very strongly saying, no, 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 we are no longer ready to, to conduct an election. But look at exactly what he is saying. Chebukati is trying to show a red card to the politicians when in actual fact he is showing a reverse uh, yellow card at himself. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying that I'm going to call a meeting between the two principals, okay? And if they, if they come and we iron out the issues, then we are going to conduct an election. 
Okay? If, if they don't, then there's that, that possibility that I could even resign. This is a man who is setting the stage either for his exit or for some mischief. I believe very strongly that if there is a person who, at this point in time, we should really blame for what is going wrong, it is Mr. Chibukati himself. Why? Because Chibukati tells us that the majority of the commissioners in the commission do not agree with him on a number of things as he wants to uh, conduct this presidential repeat election. And we are seeing, therefore, a chairman who is a lone ranger who wants to believe that he is, uh, that he is right um, um, against all the other commissioners in the commission, which cannot be right. I think the chairman needs to be honest. He has a job to do. That job cannot be done by the president, nor can it be done by NASA or Raila Odinga. He needs to tell us openly whether he is capable technically of um, conducting an election or not. As to the other issues that surround this election, which are political, which are uh, uh, probably out of uh, his realm as the chairman of the commission, that one he should leave to us. For instance, if NASA decides that in its strongholds elections are not going to be held, that is beyond him. He should uh, get his officers ready. If NASA try, uh, decides to attack those officers, if NASA decides to block the election, that's going to be a completely different issue. What he should be addressing right now is the question, is this commission technically capable of conducting an election? He has not become a political player. Maybe, no. maybe it's not just conducting an election, but uh, conducting a credible election. Absolutely. That's the, that's the point. Is he in that position in which this commission, outside the political environment, is he capable technically of conducting an election? And if the answer is no, then we can probably look at it. But if he is telling us that, you know, the environment in the country is precarious, we cannot go to some places and so on and so forth, that is something that is completely out of, uh, out of his realm. He should be asking for security. If in some places the election cannot be conducted, that is, that is going to be a completely different issue. He is going Senator, out of his mind. I, I don't know what Mambuleo wants uh, Chebukati to say. Just go and listen to what Chebukati said yesterday. Uh, listen, look at his body language, read between the lines, and apply a little bit of the skills we were taught when reading literature and uh, reading parables in the Bible. Chebukati has made it very clear that whether it's technically, whether it's politically, the environment and the, his readiness is not conducive to deliver a credible election. We have phrased this previously. Do we go for Bora Uchaguzi or we go for Uchaguzi Bora? Filomena Mwilu, in the very lengthy um, uh, um, you know, uh, ruling that was delivered by the Supreme Court, helped many Kenyans who are not lawyers like Mamboleo to internalize and to appreciate the issues. She said an election is like a math mathematical uh, problem. There is an answer, but there's a process of getting to it. If we do an election on 26th, perhaps you're going to get an answer. But what about the process? What about the method? And it has now been stated, and we are agreeing, that elections or an election is not an event. The election is not what happens on 26th, but all the steps that precede it. In my uh, culture, we've got a saying that when the tilapia comes out of the water and tells you that the Nile patch is sick, you better believe it, because the tilapia lives with the Nile patch in there. A kombe comes out and tells us the problems that are in the IBC. The chairman of the IBC himself, the returning officer of the presidential election, and remember we are not going into a general election, we are going for a presidential election where the returning officer is one, unlike the last election where we had more than 400 returning uh, officers, tells us there is a problem. We better sit down and listen and ask ourselves, how do we solve this problem so that we've got a country after 26? Mamboleo says that we go into an election, however shambolic it is, and then after that we sit down. Don't we have a government now? We have a government. The president is still in office, even though with temporary incumbency. The issues we framed, unfortunately, they've been misrepresented. There were three broad issues that NASA and other people, including Third Way Alliance, when they were still uh, objective, subscribed to. The first one was on people, and Chebukati has confirmed that. He says that there are people who are hanging on who need to get out to allow the project team but to let, conduct let me its pose work. You, Senator. Let me pose you, Senator, because as much as he says that it's a divided commission and there are people who are partisan, uh, what stops, how guaranteed are we that we also, I mean, they're, 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 they're divided in two segments. 
or some are partisan to this side, some are partisan to this other side. What stops yeah. us from uh, 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 doing that? And as we do that, yeah. uh, EBC Chair Wafula Chebukati has admitted that the commission is under siege. The national returning officer says he has been shot down over and over again with sharply divided commission. On his part, NASA leader Raila Odinga says IEBC is under the command of State House. I cannot continue to be pushed by majority commissioners to accept legal opinions that serve partisan interests and are not grounded in the constitution and the law. In the least, I find this as intellectual dishonesty for which my professional training demands that I abhor. I would rather bow out with my name intact and my head lifted high than be part of a process where personal interests drive the interests of the nation. For the last two months, we have continued to negotiate with the IBC, but to no avail. Reason is because the IBC has been taken hostage by Jubilee, by admission by Mr. Chebukati himself today. IBC is run from State House. All right. We were not even talking about the influence from state house. We were talking about the people who conducted illegalities and irregularities as uh, established by the Supreme Court. So Chebukati has brought in another dimension, which then just goes to further confirm our worst fears, that beyond the irregularities and illegalities, there could have been political pressure and influence. The second issue which we framed was around systems. Now, we are in a situation, Mike, where we invested so significantly in technology, and we are being told that because of the Ekuru Court case, the Kim's devices will not be configured in time to be able to relay the results electronically, and therefore, the Kim's device and that investment is not going to take place. When we are talking about OT Mofo, we are not talking about Otimofo just as an entity, but the systems that it had deployed, the transparency, the openness, the reliability, and the resilience of the systems that they had deployed. The third broad issue was on process. We are speaking today, the president has a, a, a bill from both Senate and National Assembly. He has not decided whether to assent to it or not, which will have a fundamental change in the process of elections and relay of results. Presiding officers are being trained. What are they being trained on? On existing law. The president might as well sign that bill into law today. And then it might necessitate fresh training for uh, presiding officers and arrows. We are not ready if you look at those three perspectives, people, systems, and processes. Do we just go into an election on 26th? I can tell you, Mike, that is not going to be the solution to the problems in Kenya. And in the past, remember the first general election under the 2010 constitution was not done on the second Tuesday of August. It was done in March. There comes a time when the people can decide that in as much as the constitution provided we do A, B, C, D, it might not be feasible. Let us find another way that will ensure the longevity, that will ensure the survival of this country. It has not been done once or twice. It has been done before in other countries. And if we are talking about the Constitution, with the kind of passion we are talking about the Constitution, even on this show, I wish you could be talking about Chapter 6 with the same vein. I wish you could be asking ourselves that killing of little children who are in their houses and killing of young men and women standing somewhere on the roadside by the police, in which part of the constitution is that condoned? We, right. cannot be, we cannot be holier than thou when it comes to elections, and then we turn a blind eye to the other things that form the core fabric of this nation. Eugene. Let me say, first of all, uh, from the Supreme Court uh, outcome, uh, nobody was uh, held responsible. Now, Chebukati is uh, a professional. If that's the environment that he's working in, I mean, th there's a reason why he's, he's competent enough to deal with it. That's why there are people who decide, hey, I can't take this, this too much and resign. There are those who know their reporting lines and they pursue the options that are viable. But crying out to us that you have, you've been held hostage, what do you want us to do? We are voters. You, we only listen to you. You tell us where you want us to go. But when you give us your problems and we are... So what, what, what did you expect the chair to do, given that he's in a position where, uh, first of all, he has one of his strongest commissioners in his own admission uh, leave? 
then he himself is admitting and saying that I have been frustrated by the fact that I have commissioners who come and vote on partisan lines. What is it that you as Eugene or Third Way Alliance expect him to do? Uh, you know, a good example is uh, Akombe. Akombe has been, uh, has been uh, praised for being bold enough to make a move like uh, resigning based on whatever is happening. I mean, uh, Chibukati has... He has his own, within his office, he has his own ways of dealing with it. I may not be private with it because I don't occupy that position, but for sure there's a process, a system in which they, they are working and it should work for him. Now, um, when you talk of, uh, when he talks of uh, processes, processes, fine, we, we, we know that the election is a process. But again, we are not, we don't have that, that liberty of deciding if, the, the issues meet the threshold or not. There is the Supreme Court that has that responsibility. Can we let it happen? Uh, Senator rightfully says that uh, 2013 elections we actually held, well, was held in March and not August as per the Constitution. Yeah, we should be accommodative and responsive to our existing context. So that it's, it's not, we shouldn't force ourselves to get into a, an election when we are not ready. But let's also agree that we, we, we dictate what kind of, envi of environment will facilitate that. NASA, that meeting of uh, the different political parties, have made a decision and it is irreducible minimums and this, we are not having an election. Non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. And they, yet they are talking of us sitting as uh, stakeholders and coming to uh, some, some way out. I, I think, let, let's just be honest to ourselves. You, you evoke integrity, uh, chapter six. The same, same leaders, the same, same uh, principles within NASA do not even, in my view, and based on the evidence and all the material that we have, they don't meet that integrity threshold. On, on what basis? Look, look, at, look at all this corruption, for instance, corruption uh, issues that have come out. In NASA? Of course. Okay, I think that'll, that'll, that'll take us to you a different, us back another, to where, another, where another discussion. Where not to go. Uh, yes, where, where yeah. we didn't want to no, go. Let he, me hear from he, you, Mambole. He came up yes, with um, the integrity. Okay. So I'm, I'm basically responding uh, to his integrity. I, I, th I think, uh, look, let's be honest here. Um, the election is not going to solve uh, our issues because this is about NASA getting to power, okay? So this election on 26 is not going to allow NASA to get into power. I'm sure uh, that's, that is the, the whole point here. NASA is telling IABC, conduct this election in a manner in which we must win. Mm -hmm. Then we will believe that the IABC is capable technically and it has the necessary but integrity. But can you qualify to do that, Mambuleo? Because when you say they're saying that it should be done in a way they must win, what I have heard them say is that it should be done in a way that the playing field is level. They cannot come out and say the playing field is level. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter how fair an election is going to be conducted. So long as NASA does not ascend to power, it's always going to say this election is not fair, which is not supposed to be the case because we must accept that the presidentialist constitution that we have given unto ourselves as a tool of governance of this country must produce a winner and must produce a loser. We cannot say that, you know, every time we go into an election and someone does not win, then we, that we must find a way of accommodating them. That is, that is a different discussion. What we need to, to do is to go back and we look at that constitution and say probably this constitution does not um, dignify the losers in the election and we, we therefore need to get a place for them. But for as long as the constitution continues to remain as it is, if you go to the Supreme Court and that Supreme Court annuls the election at, uh, under Article 140, it is going to order you to conduct an election within, 100, within 60 days. If you do not conduct that election within 60 days, then you move into a scenario in which the Constitution no longer talks about anything. I know Senator here and NASA have been saying that, you know, um, the Constitution says the president will continue being in power until such time when a, a new president has been elected and sworn in. That is very good. But you saw the other day, after uh, 8th of August, NASA was uh, speaking very loudly and saying, no, 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 Uhuru is actually exercising powers under temporary incumbency under Article 134, which means he doesn't even have power to do most of these things we are talking about. Now, wait until 
um, this window of 60 days lapses and we do not go into a constitution. Now NASA is going to come and say, okay, the constitution now doesn't even tell us how we are going to conduct this election. We need to sit together and agree how we continue ruling this country until such time when we are agree agreeable on how we are going to conduct an election. This is a political contest. And let us not be naive. Everybody is trying to make sure they get power. That is what NASA is for. It's a political party. All right. it's, a, it's a coalition that wants to get power. Okay. Let, let us not be hypocritical and think that they, they, they are engaging us so, so that we can m move this country forward. They just want power. All right, I'll, I'll ask you to pause a little bit because we need to take a short break. And